Set in Prince Florian's all-new Flower Kingdom, each of Super Mario Bros. Wonder's worlds throws a curveball at the player, expecting the typical old Mushroom Kingdom world formula. But we have to ask, which worlds are the best the Flower Kingdom has to offer? Welcome to 1UP Binge. These are Super Mario Bros. Wonder worlds worst to best. Coming in at the bottom of our list has to be World 3, Shining Falls. The stunning visuals of its golden waterfalls and elegant polygonal shapes are a treat for the eyes, and its levels each present unique challenges incorporating the local wildlife. The spiky hoppy cats in particular feature in a number of sequences, including wonder effects where they grow supersized, or where the heroes get a chance to go for a hop in hoppy cats' shoes. If they wore shoes, that is. Shining Falls is also one of the most thematically distinct of the worlds in Wonder. It's all about climbing to the top while passing the trials set by Master Poplin, who will comment on your progress as you ascend the falls. The problem is that the venerable master could have bothered to set up a few more trials, because Shining Falls is the shortest world in the game with a mere six regular levels. It's also one of two worlds to lack a boss and doesn't even have an alternate path leading to its special world entrance. Instead, Mario and friends must simply climb the falls again after receiving the royal seed from Master Poplin, where they'll automatically unlock the propeller flower leading to this secret area. Shining Falls is conceptually awesome, but we can't help but feel like some corners got cut here during the development process, leading to a world that feels a little bit half-baked. The journey to enlightenment should take longer than that, on the flip side, there's no shortage of stuff to do in World 6, the Deep Magma Bog. This lava-filled cave complex hosts a plethora of scorching hot stages that will force players to put out fires and make their way over pits of magma as they descend into its depths. The double whammy of the game's final flying battleship and final Bowser Jr. battle in the palace only adds to the difficulty, and it'll take all your skills to reach the end and claim the last of the six royal seats. However, while the Deep Magma Bog may deliver in terms of quantity, it falls a bit short in the creativity department. Most Mario 2D platformers end with a lava world, and this one doesn't offer enough of a unique premise to allow it to stand out from the many that have come before it. The name of the world suggests a treacherous swamp crossed with a volcano, an unexpected combination that could have made for some inventive levels and would have been a perfect environment for fire-spitting piranha plants. But not much is done with that idea, leaving the Deep Magma Bog as just another endgame lava world to test the heroes right before the big showdown with Bowser. Also, the gauntlet of badge challenges guarding the path to the special world here might be daunting, but as far as world layouts go, comes off as a bit lazy. Like the developers ran out of ideas for placing those challenges on a map, and so just strung them all together in a row. The Wonder Team was clearly going for a classic feel with the game's special world as well. This last series of super hard optional challenges is a neat throwback to the Star World from Super Mario World, being accessed in a similar way. Rather than opening up all at once like most of the other worlds, each of the special world's first seven levels is accessed by finding a hidden propeller flower pad in one of the other worlds. Only after completing each of these ordeals can Mario and his friends reach the center of the special world, which contains the hardest levels in all of Super Mario Bros. Wonder. This world will push the player to their limit, testing all of their skills as one final hurdle for those who like to go above and beyond simply beating the game. Many of the special world levels center around gimmicks that demand mastery of every one of Wonder's mechanics. You'll need to expertly navigate pole blocks, ride descending platforms down a long shaft, and survive a perilous trek while transformed into a Goomba to make it to the end. There, Wonder has one last trick up its sleeve, a grueling marathon of a level that expects you to know the game's badges inside and out. The special world might be a little bland when it comes to visuals and navigation, but we just had to boost it up a spot in the ranking for its difficulty. We'll leave it to you to decide whether the goofy sound off badge you're awarded with for clearing the final level is worth the trouble or not. We're now at the middle of the ranking, and it's time to discuss the geographical center of the Flower Kingdom, the Petal Isles. This place isn't the basic hub area only used to jump from place to place, but rather a fully fleshed out world in its own right. The Petal Isles offer the most diverse gameplay and environments to be found in Super Mario Bros. Wonder, 
combining underwater stages that showcase the dolphin kick maneuver, with classic cave levels and clever new stage hazards. The transformed Bowser has also taken up residence in the Petal Isles, looming over the peaceful archipelago in his new flying castle form, and stressing the urgency of the hero's mission to put a stop to his plans. It's not surprising that Mario and friends will have to face down one of Kamek's flying battleships as well as Bowser's own artillery barrages, as they island hop through the heart of the Flower Kingdom, before finally sticking it to the King of the Koopas himself. If there's one notable drawback of the Petal Isles though, it's that the diversity of its levels and its fragmented structure can make it difficult to appreciate the world's distinct identity. You'll be darting in and out of this world all throughout your adventure, never staying here for more than a few levels at a time before you're off to a different corner of the land. Still, major props to the Petal Isles for bringing variety, and better swimming mechanics, to the otherwise dreaded water world theme. If there's one type of platforming level that's bound to cause more headaches than the waterlogged courses, Mamma mia. it's typically the winter-themed levels with their slippery ice physics. Fortunately, that's not too much of a problem in Super Mario Bros. Wonders World 2, Fluff Puff Peaks. This sky-high mountain transitions from snowy cliffs near the start of the world to a dreamlike cloud wonderland, providing fantastic vistas and an array of well-designed levels that take advantage of the icy environments without wearing out their welcome. There's plenty of challenge to be had here as well. The flying battleship and palace combo demonstrate that Bowser's minions aren't playing around anymore. And there are some real heart-pounding optional segments that require precise jumping if you go out of your way to face them. Fluff Puff Peaks continues the momentum begun in World 1, mixing up the level design and theming from what the player might expect, and giving them plenty of incentive to continue exploring the colorful worlds of the Flower Kingdom. And speaking of World 1, we're as shocked as anyone to be awarding our bronze medal to Super Mario Bros. Wonder's introductory area, the Pipe Rock Plateau. While the first few levels of the game are your bog-standard grassy plains and gameplay tutorials, it's not long before the plateau really opens up into a full-sized introduction to all that the Flower Kingdom has to offer. There's rough cliff sections, a quick trip into the kingdom's underground, and a trail that leads far off the beaten path to the first entrance to this special world. Pipe Rock Plateau also offers a well-rounded tour of the land's flora and fauna, from the shape-shifting elephant fruits and the world-altering wonder flowers, to the skittish skedaddlers and stampeding bulrushes. And how could we forget the singing piranha plants and roller skating koopas? This place is truly a treat for newcomers and veterans alike, blending together the new and old and giving players a host of choices for how they'd like to tackle the world's challenges. Pipe Rock Plateau goes above and beyond what's expected of a first world in a Mario game, and for that reason it just had to rank in the top three. But we have to keep ascending even higher into the ranks in search of the kingdom's truly wonderful sights. Paradoxically, doing so involves a deep dive into its depths, namely the fungi mines of World 5. You might be surprised to see the mines taking our silver medal because like Shining Falls, this world also lacks a boss. However, it more than makes up for that with its length and sheer variety of levels. The mines combine forest, cave, and ruins themes, flavored with ghosts, toxic ooze, and all sorts of unsettling sights as Mario and friends climb deeper into the mysterious abyss beneath the Flower Kingdom's sunny surface. The resident poplins are also at their most active here, where some miners take it upon themselves to unearth a royal seed for Prince Florian. They get trapped in the process and need to be rescued, but hey, A plus for effort, guys. But perhaps the coolest feature of the Fungi Mines might be its ghost house hidden in the fog. Inhabited by King Boo and his minions, all set to serenade you with an operatic aria. If the Mario Brothers are looking for a spooky vacation destination for their next Halloween, they should take a deep dive into the fungi forest of the Flower Kingdom. Just try not to think about what all that slimy green ooze actually is. But what if we were to tell you that there's a world even more mysterious and a whole lot drier out there to explore? World 4, The Sunbaked Desert, is one of three worlds that opens up at the same time around the game's halfway point. We wouldn't be surprised though if most players immediately make tracks for the desert, because this place truly earns the gold medal for the best world in Super Mario Bros. Wonder. Right from the start, there's a sense of urgency that's lacking elsewhere in the Flower Kingdom's worlds. 
as Bowser Jr. is hoarding the desert's limited water and threatening the survival of the local poplins. Even beyond that, the sun-baked desert takes advantage of the environment to craft a dynamic overworld that's more than just a means of moving from level to level. Some stages are hidden by sand or mirages and have to be exposed. There's a hidden level behind a panel that has to be opened by standing on switches, and there's even a secret shop for sharp-eyed players to find. The levels themselves here are no slouches either. The resident mumsies will trip you up. The ninjas will have you jumping to the beat in their hidden dance hall behind the oasis waterfall. There are ancient pyramids and ruins to explore, one of which features a color switching gimmick reminiscent of certain Legend of Zelda dungeons. And finally, all of this culminates in a gravity-defying underwater match with the greedy Bowser Jr. The sun-baked desert knocks its world theme out of the park, pulling together all the best that Super Mario Bros. Wonder has to offer into one satisfying package. Just be sure to pack some sunscreen when you venture in.